Welcome to Emmanuel Reformed Church online service. My name is Jody Grass, and I'm the Director of Adult Discipleship, and I'd like to welcome you to worship. We'd love to know that you're joining us today, so you can you leave a comment and also share this video with others. We'd also like to invite you to sign in on our Emmanuel Reformed Church app, and it's a great place to leave a prayer request. We truly do love having the privilege of praying for you and with you. You can also contact us through our website at erc.la, or you can call the church office at the phone number on the screen. Another way we worship is through the giving of our tithes and offerings, and there are many ways that you can give. One is through our Emmanuel Reformed Church app, you can also give on our website at erc.la backslash give, or you can mail a check to the address shown on the screen. If you are in need, we'd like to let you know that our food bank will be open on Fridays from 9 to 10 a.m. And now would you join me in prayer as we begin worship together. Lord, we are grateful that we can gather. Though not in a building this week, we can still gather as a church community. And we are so grateful that you are drawing us together in new ways. God, we pray for your hand of protection over our world right now. God, we pray just specifically for the stop of the spread of the coronavirus, just recognizing the reality of where we are today. God, we thank you that you are God and you still sit on your throne and none of this is taking you by surprise. So God, we pray that you would use this time in our world and in us in a very special way. God, we pray that today we would create holy habits, that our lives would be changed from this day forward in a way that is growing in our walk and our love for you. God, we thank you for this community. We thank you that you are still at work. We thank you for what you are about to do. God, we just lift up Pastor Clark to you today. As he brings a message, we pray, God, right now that you would open our hearts and our minds to receive what you have for us today. God, we thank you that you are God, and we pray that you would have your way in each one of us. And we pray all this in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Now let's worship.
Father everlasting, the all-creating one, God Almighty. Through your Holy Spirit, conceiving Christ our Son, Jesus our Savior. Son, I believe in the Holy Spirit. Our God is three in one. I believe in the resurrection that we will rise again. For I believe in the name of God bless you. Um, We have the opportunity right now, I think, to do three things, to care, to grow, and to be. Could we care for the body of Christ? Could each person within our church do your part, using your phone, using your social media? Could you care for the body of Christ? Jesus said, uh, I was a stranger. You welcomed me in. I was a prisoner. You visited me. I wonder if we could find ways to show love to the body of Christ, each one of us. We'll be blessed as we give. And then we care beyond the body of Christ as well. Could we care? Two, could we grow? Is this a season that we're slowing down and we actually have time to be transformed by the word of God, not conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of our minds? If this isn't a time, when will there be a time? I think the time is now. Let's step in. Let's grow. So we're going to care for each other. Let's grow in the Lord daily. 
in the word of God in, in, within this. And finally, would we be the body of Christ by being in fellowship with each other? If you read Hebrews 3, Hebrews 10, Acts chapter 2, they say things like this. They met together daily to build each other up. Encourage one another daily. Consider how you might spur one another on toward love and good deeds. We actually have the tools now. I've got the word of God. I've got a phone. I've got a reading plan. I read the scripture of my day. I pass it on to others. Could we now step in and be the body of Christ because we have the time and send each other a verse each day? And if I can send a verse to my text loop, I probably could share that verse at the dinner table with my family. I probably could share that with somebody who doesn't even know the Lord yet. Is this the time for us to be the body of Christ? Let's care for each other and beyond the church. Let's grow in Christ together. And could we be as Christ by sending each other scriptures and spiritual encouragement? Maybe this hard season is actually a time where God is doing something brand new. Would you step in, care, grow in Christ? Would you be as Christ to those in the church and beyond? God bless you. Welcome to Emmanuel Reformed Church's online services. I'm Clark Corver. I'm one of the pastors here and honored to be worshiping with you today. You've heard the last couple of weeks our overarching themes the last few years. We've encouraged our church to walk in step with the Holy Spirit that God himself lives inside you. And we've implored our church to read it and write it, to pray it and to share it. And this year, our theme has been this priesthood of all believers. This is found right out of Scripture. The premise is that every man and woman, boy and girl, is to continue the mission of Jesus, to do what Jesus did and to say what Jesus said. Now, as I was writing this sermon and preparing for today, I looked up in my office, and when I first moved here nine, ten years ago, someone gave me a newspaper article, and I recognized the man on the article. It was my grandpa, Pastor Harold, from 1971. And the headline of the article reads this, Every Christian a priest, in every home a church, a healing community in a sick society. Is that not a prophetic word for us today as we continue the mission of Jesus? And so when you leave here today, the one line I want to give you is this. When you follow the Holy Spirit's leading and you understand that you're a priest, God will give you a boldness to witness. A boldness to witness. This comes right out of the scriptures. If you look at Acts 4, Verses 29 and 30, the scripture reads, Now, Lord, consider their threats, the religious leaders and the Roman Empire, and enable your, spirit, your servants to speak your word with great boldness. Stretch out your hand and heal and perform signs and wonders through the name of your holy servant, Jesus. And so we're just following the example of Jesus in scripture, following the example of the apostles, and we're given a boldness to witness. Now, when you look at the first couple chapters of Acts, Acts 2, Peter stands up empowered by the Holy Spirit right in front of the Antonia, the Antonia fortress. And he preaches this powerful sermon right in front of the religious elite and these Roman mercenaries, basically. And in doing so, 3,000 people come to Christ. And then Acts 3, they're walking to the temple and there's the lame man. They don't have silver or gold, but they heal him in the name of Jesus. There's this sense of of boldness. There's a boldness to witness. Now, after these things happen, we come to Acts 4, which is where we're going to spend our time today. And in Acts 4, the religious leaders are talking to the disciples, and they say, by what power are you doing all these things? And whose name are you doing them? Because the man who was lame and is now healed is standing right there in, in front of them. And the religious leaders say, the word's going to get out to Jerusalem. What has happened is undeniable. And so we're praying, church, that right now, with, with all that's happening, our current events, that the Holy Spirit would use the church to work in, in undeniable ways to bring the healing touch and love of Jesus to a world that is hurt and is sick. Every Christian a priest in every home a church. And so when they asked him, by what power are you doing this? It's an invitation to preach the gospel. They say, the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, Salvation's found in nobody else. You think of Acts 2, and all throughout Acts, the gospel hinges on the death and the resurrection of Jesus Christ. 
Peter stands up in Acts 2 and says, Jesus Christ, whom God deliberately handed over to you in his foreknowledge, and then you, with the help of wicked and evil men, you put him to death, but death can't keep its hold on him. He was freed from the agony of death and was raised to life. That is where this boldness to witness comes from. And so when you look at the passage today, the scripture that we read, a a boldness to witness, why? Because one, God is sovereign. And two, because God is faithful. So I'd like to be bold and make my own definition of boldness right now. And boldness is simply doing the right thing and saying the right thing, no matter what the circumstances are. It doesn't have to be six six bodybuilder. You could be a 90-year-old grandma. You could be a five-year-old in preschool. But you can do the right thing and say the right thing in honor of King Jesus. Boldness is one part grace and one part truth. And you can't have one without the other. And you think about world history. I think of Martin Luther King and the Civil Rights Movement. They marched and often very few words were spoken. Boldness. I think of Abraham Lincoln. When you look at a picture of Abraham Lincoln, he is the least physically intimidating man I have ever seen in my life. But when you read his words or you hear him speak, there's power and there's boldness to do the right thing, to say the right thing in the name of Jesus Christ. So our scripture today comes from Acts 4, a boldness to witness, verses 23 through 31. The passage reads this, On their release, Peter and John went back to their own people and reported all that the chief priests and elders had said to them. When they heard this, they raised their voices together in prayer to God. Sovereign Lord, they said, you made the heavens and the earth and the sea and everything in them. You spoke by the Holy Spirit through the mouth of your servant, our father David. Why do the nations rage? And the people's plot in vain. The kings of earth rise up and the rulers band together against the Lord, against his anointed one. Indeed, Herod and Pontius Pilate met together with the Gentiles and the people of Israel in the city to conspire against your holy servant Jesus, whom you anointed. They did what your power and will had decided beforehand should happen. Now, Lord, consider their threats and enable your servants to speak your word with great boldness. Stretch out your hand to heal and perform signs and wonders through the name of your holy servant, Jesus. And after they prayed, the place where they were meeting was shaken. And they were all filled with the Holy Spirit and spoke the word of God boldly. So this line today, a boldness to witness, flows, if you pay attention to the scripture, out of a prayer life. Now, what is prayer? Prayer is simply a conversation with God. Just as you and I are able to communicate, there's one aspect of speaking and another of listening. And so just the other day, I was walking into the church and I saw my buddy Mike Kim out by the water fountain and he he was staring up at the sky and talking to God. And me being a little creepy, I, I snuck over and I said, I wonder what Mike is saying. And he asked God, God, what is a million years like to you? And God said, Mike, it's just like one minute. So Mike asked him another question. He said, God, what's a million dollars like to you? And God said, it's like one penny. So Mike, being really wise and thinking he's tricky, he goes, God, uh, could I have a penny? And God says, sure, in one minute. (laughs) And I, I love that cheesy joke. It actually reveals the heart of many of our prayers. I wonder how often I pray to God only when I need something. And if you think about it, every time I came to you, if you saw me coming, I'm like, hey, can I have a dollar? Can I borrow your ladder? Can I borrow your car? And the next day, here I come again. Hey, can I borrow $5? Eventually, you're going to see me coming and go, oh, great. Here comes Clark. He wants my money. He wants my ladder. He wants my car. Clark, go get your own ladder. Go get your own car. Just figure it out. There's going to be resentment there. Now, I wonder how God feels when it comes to prayer. And the only time I pray to him, maybe you can relate to me, is when I, I need something. Because right now we need something. Look at the current events at hand. And I wonder how often God's like, hey, I, I haven't heard from you since 9-11. I haven't heard from you since the stock market crashed last time. Now, when you look at the Bible, you see that God is a Abba Father. God's always present. He's always listening. The heart of a God the Father is that he wants a relationship with you. So you come to him. But what's interesting is when you look at this passage and how these people pray, 
of the seven verses, five verses of their prayer is a prayer of praise. They're acknowledging, God, this is who you are, and this is what you've done. And then it's after that, there are two verses they make their request. And that's not a bad thing. But when you are begin your prayer, praying, God, this is who you are, this is what you've done, and then you move into your request, we believe that by the Holy Spirit's leading, we remember who God is, that he's faithful and that he's sovereign, we'll have this boldness to witness. So this first question is, why do we have a boldness to witness? Because God is sovereign. Look back at the scripture, Acts 4, 24, 27, and 28. Sovereign Lord, they said, you made the heavens and the earth and the sea and everything in them. Indeed, Herod and Pontius Pilate met together with the Gentiles and the people of Israel in this city to conspire against your holy servant Jesus, whom you anointed. And they did what your power and will had decided beforehand should happen. When we talk about the sovereignty of God, that's a big fancy word for saying God is all-powerful, he is all-knowing, and he's everywhere, even right now. God, you're the creator of all things, all things good. It was in Genesis 3 when humanity decided, Adam and Eve, that they could live their life better without God, that they got exactly what they wanted. And it's from Genesis 3 on we've battled sin and viruses and tsunamis. All of creation has been corrupted, but still God is on his throne. It says he is the ruler of all. So when it comes to the circumstances at hand right now, you're going, I want to have this boldness to witness, and I like to believe that God is sovereign, but I wonder why God would allow these things to happen right now. And I'm sure as you hear this, you can think through your life, there have been other moments where you've experienced pain and tragedy. You've asked, how could God allow this to happen? And Christianity doesn't give you an answer for why every single bad thing, sad thing, painful thing happens. But here's what we do know, the one answer that was given to us. It's not because God doesn't care. If God didn't care, he wouldn't have sent Jesus Christ to die a death that I deserve to die and you deserve to die. So it's not because God doesn't care. He loves you. For God so loved the world, he gave his one and only son. So we as Christians have to move to a place right now where God is doing something new. There's an opportunity. Holy Spirit, call us to be the priest to continue the mission of Jesus. Give us this boldness to witness like we've read right out of our our scripture. And we trust that God's good. And you trust that God has a plan. Now, when you're around Christians who uh, believe this and embody it, it's powerful. It's inspiring. One man comes to my mind. His name is Nabil Qureshi. He was a Muslim, became a Christian, and then became an apologist who defended the Christian faith, specifically to the Muslim community. And thousands of people have come to Christ by the work of the Spirit through Nabil. Now, sadly, Nabil got stomach cancer. He passed away a while back. But while he was on his deathbed, he prayed. And I want you to hear what he prayed. This is what he said before he passed. He said, Lord, we know that you are able. Please heal. Please come through. But if it shouldn't be your will, your sovereign will at the end of the day, then I trust you and I love you anyway. We praise you, Lord, and we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Nabil is living out the scripture that we've read today. Sovereign Lord, we believe you're the creator over all. Give us a boldness to witness. That was bold of Nabil, and he sure was a witness. And you and I are called to do the same thing. Now, there's so many questions right now and even fewer answers. That's when God does his best work. Believe that. Now, I want you to put your hand on your chest one more time and take a big breath. We believe that the Holy Spirit lives inside the Christian. When Psalm 139 talks about how you are fearfully and wonderfully made, God knows the number of hairs that are on your head. He's anointed and appointed your days. So think about this, that God created you knowing that in your lifetime, this virus would come. Like this is not a surprise to God. God's not reacting going, oh no, what's happening? What should I do? In God's sovereignty, he's working. And he's placed you at this point in world history for a reason. You are no accident. Now you're called to be a priest. You're called to continue the mission of Jesus. You're called to a boldness to witness. Now, if you step back and you look around, you're like, God, if you're sovereign, like what on earth is going on? 
Here are just a few observations from, from Pastor Clark. This is not a thus saith the Lord, God told me, just observations. One, the idolatry of America is being hit. Our first love is money. The stock market, not doing so well. We love entertainment. We, we worship these entertainers. Gone. I love sports. If you know the Corver family, you know we love sports. It's canceled. Is that a bad thing? God, would you sit on the throne of our heart and would you be number one? Would you alone be receiving of our worship? Now, now, secondly, our country, we go so fast, 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 fast. Swiping, 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 credit card, Amazon Prime. It's not here in two days. I am furious. Where is it at? Two days, credit card. This is incredible how fast we're going. In the Bible, when God's people went so fast, they didn't take a Sabbath. God made them slow down. He made them take a Sabbath. I wonder if this is actually the grace of God. The third and final thing I'd like to offer you and, and should encourage you in God's sovereignty and be bold and witness is start with your own family. When we're moving towards quarantine and trying to keep the social distancing from each other, you're going to be with your friends. You're going to be with the people you live with, most likely your family. Is that a bad thing? I'm guessing there are going to be an incredible number of babies born between Christmas and New Year's. I celebrate that. God's creativity between a male and a female in marriage, what a gift that we're having to slow down, remove the idols from our life, and focus on what really matters most, the Lord and the people right next to us. Psalm 119 says, God, your faithfulness endures for all generations. You've established the earth. You've established the earth, and it stands fast. My friends, this is an opportunity. God is sovereign. If you're trying to honor Jesus Christ and look to the scriptures, you know, he's going to use you. He'll use you in accordance to his will, and you and I can't mess up his plan. So this opportunity, this boldness to witness, there's a second reason in scripture, and it's this. One, because God is faithful. He won't let us down. Revisit Acts 4, verses 29 and 30. It says, Now, Lord, consider their threats, the, the virus, the, the toilet paper's gone, whatever you consider a threat right now. <laughs> Enable your servants to speak your word with great boldness. Stretch out your hand and heal and perform signs and wonders through the name of your holy servant, Jesus. Now, you have to ask yourself, what? What happened to these men, to Peter? I mean, he tried to hack a guy's ear off. I, I, I believe he had horrible aim. He probably wasn't going for his ear. And he has bad aim. And, and he was hiding in the upper room. And they're cowering there. And all of a sudden, he's empowered by the Spirit. And he's bold. What happened? You look back at what they've witnessed. They witnessed the death of Jesus Christ. And then the resurrection of Jesus Christ. God is faithful. The Holy Spirit's been poured out and the Christians have been empowered. God is faithful. Peter preaches this sermon in Acts 2 and 3,000 people come to accept Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior. God is faithful. And then they're walking to the temple and this lame man is healed and the Pharisees and the Sadducees are looking going, what happened? This is undeniable. And more people come to Christ. God is faithful. So there's a boldness to witness when you believe God is sovereign and that he's faithful. So I want you to reflect today, maybe when this is done, and think back in your life, when has God been faithful? Because he has. And that should spur you on to boldness and to witness. Now, when I think of this, I think of this, this story I heard recently from um, one of my uh, friends at, at Kids Club this past week. And Kids Club is one of our um, student ministries here. And in our student ministries, they begin their time with Holy Spirit stories, God stories. And in this, um, this one girl stood up, her name's Emily. And she said, this past week when, when school was opened, she said, I felt the Holy Spirit nudging me to invite my friend to church. And her, like many of us, probably a little nervous, but she did it. She followed the Holy Spirit's leading. She was bold. And she was telling the, the kids club group this, and, and she didn't come. And a little disappointment. Two minutes later, guess who walks through the door? Her friend. Everybody goes crazy. I'm sure the mom was like, what kind of group of people is this? What's happening? And the directors welcomed her and explained what happened, and, and they had a great time. But this, this elementary school girl, bold, and she witnessed. And so when you look at the Bible again, Peter uh, this, this coward and this reactive, this impulsive to this, this man of God 
who's preaching the word. There's an opportunity for us at hand. One commentator I read said this about Peter preaching to the Romans. He said it was like a hillbilly from Kentucky uh, teaching and instructing the professors of MIT. So if you get that picture in your head in Acts 2 and they're like, wait, aren't these guys talking Galileans? That was not a compliment. It was definitely a backhand. In, in the scripture today, it talks about how they were unschooled and ordinary men. This should give you an I hope. God wants to use ordinary people. The closing story I want to give you is this, when it comes to God's sovereignty and God's faithfulness. This past week, my wife and I got a, a, a message from one of our college friends. In college, she studied nursing and battled the clinicals and the tests, and that's hard stuff. If you've done this yourself or know anybody, and she became a nurse and moved to a large city in the United States, and her job right now is to do home visits and to visit those children who have uh, compromised immune systems. Yeah, this is very relevant right now. And she walked into the home to do her visit, and the, the father, I believe, of the child had abandoned them or left, and then the mom was about to make a really bad decision, like life-ending decision. And so I, knowing my friend, she stepped in and for six hours she, she talked to the mom and she was able to get her in a car and drive for six hours and get the child to safety and help the mom remove um, any problematic things that had been in the situation. And, and knowing my friend, I know she was bold and I know she witnessed and she testified to the name of Jesus Christ. And so right now, I believe the, the biggest enemy to the Christian church is not the coronavirus. It's been apathy. And like, as you've heard Pastor Ken said, if not now, when? Church, we invite you to step in. Be a disciple. Be a priest. Read your word and share it. Spread it. Look for tangible ways to love everybody as we're walking in wisdom. Another enemy to this situation and to the church is fear. The perfect love drives out fear. We walk in wisdom and knowing that God is sovereign. And he's going to take care of us. And we walk wisely. And lastly, uh, the codependency on Christian leaders is being removed. It's not just your pastor's job. It's not just your elder's job. It's not just the, the kids club leader's job or the Sunday school teacher's job. You're a Christian. You're a priest. The same Holy Spirit that raised God from the dead, he lives in you. Now, what might God be inviting you into? And in the midst of it, would he give you a boldness to witness. I close with these words from Deuteronomy 31 6. It says, Be strong and be courageous. Do not be afraid or terrified because of them, for the Lord your God, He goes with you. He will never leave you, He will never forsake you. Church, let's pray. Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, we thank you for this time. And God, would you be with your church? Um, in every home, in every apartment complex, in North America, South America, Africa, Asia, all throughout the world, Lord, we trust that you're doing something new. We trust that every Christian is to be a priest in every home or church. Would you empower us, Lord, in a boldness to witness and to speak the name of Jesus. And all of God's people said, amen. God bless you. Praise God from whom all blessings Oh